I'm going to talk about a very important calculation that you're going to need to do in advanced business to business marketing. It is called sales velocity. Now, there are a few things I want to point out here before I get started. The first is that companies tend to calculate things differently. So for example, when we look at customer lifetime value, some people calculate it based on profit, which is kind of the most robust way of calculating it. But in some businesses, often it's just more practical and useful to calculate it based on revenue. So keep that in mind. You can modify this based on your needs. Now, one of the key ways you're going to consider modifying it is whether you're calculating sales velocity based on the number of sales qualified opportunities or the number of leads and that calculation may vary depending on the specific needs in your specific company all right so before we get into the calculation i want to point out that there are three different terms that you may hear thrown around and uh, often what happens in marketing is we talk about things so frequently that we uh, come up with colloquialisms and uh, don't necessarily use the most technical, precise terms. So some people may call the sales velocity, other people may call it pipeline velocity, or they may combine the two and call it sales pipeline velocity. I would say that probably a, a, an appropriate term might be pipeline velocity because typically what we're talking about here is the sales pipeline, which is associated with the sales qualified opportunities, uh, which is associated with the pipeline revenue calculation. So the potential revenue that's associated with the sales qualified opportunities. That's the, the most sort of precise way that we're going to analyze this, at least in this example. Uh, the other thing is that uh, typically you're dealing with the opportunities. Now, some people are going to call them opportunities. Other companies, you may technically call it SQOs, which stands for sales qualified opportunities. The way I typically define these is uh, we're not talking about leads per se. What we're talking about are um, leads that are being worked by the sales team that have a reasonable chance of ending up in a purchase in the next say six months whether that purchase is with you or a competing solution so this is a lead that has the potential to generate revenue in the short term now uh, it may also be useful for you to calculate it based on leads so something like uh, perhaps mqls or uh, marketing engaged leads. So theoretically, you could do a velocity measure based on leads, uh, but usually you would do it based on uh, this type of opportunity. The other thing is that the data that you're going to use to calculate your velocity is usually going to be based on the month or based on the quarter. Now, in, a, in some companies, maybe it's more useful to use different timelines, but generally in B2B, that's where we're going to pull the data. In the example I'm going to give, we're going to use the quarter uh, data. So this is what the formula is. It's the, the number of opportunities or the number of active opportunities times the average deal size. So the deal size is the, the revenue generally. You could use profit, but we're going to use revenue times the win rate. So what percentage of those opportunities are actually being won and closed and divide all of this by the sales cycle. So to give you a quick example here, maybe we have 30 opportunities and the average deal size is three thousand dollars so it's kind of small for b2b and the win rate's 33 percent. so you're winning a third of those deals and the sales cycle from sqo to closed is 45 days now one thing to keep in mind here is that we are talking about the sqo uh, sales cycle we're not necessarily talking about lead to closed we're talking about sqo to closed. So often what happens in business to business companies is they generate tons of so-called leads, but most of those leads don't end up being worked by the sales team or they don't end up being uh, anywhere near a high probability of actually becoming new customers. So that's why when we're talking about pipeline velocity, usually we're, we're focused on the sales cycle from becoming an opportunity to becoming a, a closed one or, or, or closed lost. So in this per particular example, we have the formula. So I did 30 times $3,000 times 0.33 for 33% divided by that 
by uh, 45 days, and we get a pipeline velocity of $660, $660 per day. So that's, that's kind of a low pipeline velocity uh, for business to business. So we're probably dealing here with uh, SMB software or, or something uh, similar. Okay, so this is a high level overview of what the calculation looks like, some of the considerations. Now let's get into a little more granular detail with an example. So here we have again the formula ops, number of opportunities times the average deal size times the win rate, all divided by the length of the sales cycle. So what we're going to do is we're going to start filling the data for Q3, so third quarter, and this is the data. So you can pull this data from your uh, Salesforce or whatever your CRM is. Maybe you use Tableau to collect this, or uh, maybe your chief financial officer provides a table or a spreadsheet. Um, in either case, just, just make sure you get access to the data. So this is kind of a simplified look of what it may look like. Um, so what we need here is the total number of opportunities for Q3. So right now the data is breaking it up by source. So let's just calculate the total. The sum of all of these is 373 opportunities that quarter. Now the average deal size. Okay, so here we need to think about the actual average. So I cannot simply just average all of these because these themselves are averages. So if I take an average of averages, it's not going to give me the true average. So let's come back to this in a second. All right, now the number of closed one here is easy to calculate. I can just do again a sum of these. Okay, so we had closed one of 189 deals. Now the win rate for the individual lead sources, not really important for us in calculating sales velocity because we're not doing it at that granular level. Uh, so really what we're interested in is the win rate uh, overall. And to calculate that, we're just going to say that the number of wins was 189. We're going to divide it by the total number of opportunities, 373. And we see that the win rate is over 50%. So now we need to go back to this issue of having averages of averages. So really what we need to do is come up with a total revenue number. So you may not have to calculate this. Uh, maybe it's provided in your report, but we're going to do it here because this is the data that we have. So really, I'm not interested in the average deal size. I'm interested in the total revenue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the average deal size times the, the number of one deals. Okay, so this is going to give me the total revenues. Just like that. So now we're able to calculate a total revenue number here. Okay, so 4.7 million. And now we can take that to ascertain the actual average deal size, which is going to be the total revenue divided by the total number of closed one. And here we get the true average of 24,882 British pounds. And we see here that the average sales cycle is 33 days. So here we're talking about the time from SQ, from becoming an SQO to uh, closed, to the lead closing, either as a one deal or a loss deal. Okay, so now we can start plugging in the information here. So the number of ops is 373, which I'm getting from here. The average deal size is 24882. The win rate is 50.6%. Uh, and then the average sales cycle is 33, which means that we can use this formula to calculate our sales of velocity. So it equals the number of ops, 373. The average deal size is 24882. The win rate is 0 0.506. 
and divided by the average sales cycle is 33. And here we have it. So in this example, we have a very high sales velocity in your business. It might be quite a bit lower. It could be $1,000, $2,000. Um, and of course, context is going to dictate a lot of this. It also just depends on how you're going to use this, this metric and whether it's for forecasting purposes or fixing a problem. Uh, one of the key things in your business is you want to think about what aspect of sales velocity do you want to change so are you trying to increase the deal size well when you increase the deal size and go after large enterprise clients what that often means is the sales cycle is going to increase uh, so you have to consider trade-offs like that trying to increase the win rate by adding and investing more in sales enablement uh, it may be worth it if your win rate is particularly low uh, so there's a lot to consider here very useful metric i uh, hope you enjoy this